Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very, very well, Sarah. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. That's good. That's good. You have a good weekend? Um, yeah, I got, I, felt, I had a productive weekend. I'll productive, put it at that. Yeah, productive weekends are good. Did you, did you binge watch anything or, or? Um, have you ever heard of this show called, um, Our Girl? It's a, it's a BBC know. show. No, I can't say that I have. Enlighten us. <laughs> well, um, if anybody's curious, apparently you get the first two seasons on Amazon. Funny thing about the show, though, is I I thought like it would be multi-season. I, I've kind of seen some of these characters um, while watching fan vids on on YouTube. Um, sometimes I'll watch multi-couple ones and. And then it'll intrigue me enough to go try to find, like, where those characters are from, like, their home show. Yeah. And so this was one of them. And so I'm watching the first season, and then I finish, and I was kind of like, oh, it's all right. I skipped probably, like, 60% of the show. (laughs) But I start season two, completely different cast. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking on IMDb, and this show has gone on for four seasons. Wow. So seasons two through four have a completely different cast than season one. Really? <laughs> yeah, huh. It's really wow. weird. Yeah, it's very weird. That's very well, weird. That's British for you. <laughs> I don't know. Did you binge watch anything? Uh, I did not, but uh, I did get caught up on a couple shows that we uh, planned have planned on talking about for some time. And uh, I did watch the uh, Saturn Awards, actually. Friday night, which was like so weird because they never broadcast it. And this year they actually broadcast it on, on YouTube and, and several other streaming spots. So it was it was pretty cool to Aisha Aisha Tyler was the host and was you know a lot of it was a celebration of geekdom. Obviously Saturn Awards is like an award show for the genre for fantasy, sci fi and horror. So uh it was um yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed it. So, right, and I see that I saw that uh, Supergirl won for best TV show, which means that no, this isn't a popularity sh- contest. They it's really the- do give the awards to the best shows because Supergirl. After I saw that headline, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, Will and I yeah. called it. It was the best Good. show in that genre by far last season. I don't know if this year they'll be able to keep, like, rate, surpass it, but it was a pretty damn good season. It was a damn good season. And, and honestly, half the show, over half the shows in the category were their uh, compatriot shows on the, the CW. And, mm-hmm. but, and, and also um, uh, Cloak and Dagger was also nominated in that category but out of the bunch it definitely was was well deserved and uh i was i was very happy to see that and you're right it's not a popularity contest it is it's not like you know the sympathy vote that arrow got this year for murder was it wow that was some shade granted though will i mean <laughs> even though supergirl won so did daredevil and daredevil yes, that... season three was not that good like yeah come on Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> that really is a sympathy vote. <laughs> that was a sympathy vote. That was a total sympathy vote. And it's funny whenever the uh, uh, showrunner for for Marvel Television came up, he, he was like, "Can we find us a network for our show, please, please?" <laughs> but uh, it was it, so I, that was a, that was a good moment to see to, whenever that happened. Uh, another uh, the MCU, of course, was well. Um, represented and um tom holland won in a category for i think best superhero in a movie uh john favreau won the um visionary award uh kind of a almost like a a lifetime achievement for you know basically creating the mcu as we think about iron man and and all the things that have spun from it it was his first film with kevin feige who also won an award, the new Stan Lee Award. Uh, so the MCU was 
was definitely well represented. And of course, Endgame won the the equivalent of Best Picture, in the, in the Saturn Awards. And so, you know, all the things that we have raved about and even ranted about, uh, the voters in the uh, Saturn Awards were pretty much tracking a lot of things that we that we liked. And then, of course, my personal favorite thing was uh, Star Trek Discovery, won uh, Best uh, Streaming Show, and for science fiction and mm-hmm. uh, Martin Green won the best actress for right. in her category and uh, Doug Jones who plays Saru also won for a best supporting actor so it had a good run Walking Dead did of course and uh, Westworld was also another notable winner in, in this category No love for Krypton No love for Krypton but even though Cameron was there and he was also nominated for uh, best or young okay, actor. Okay, so there were nominations. They just yeah, didn't win, yeah, they didn't and they win. got canceled. Was... Way to add salt in the wound, people. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but he was there, and he actually got to. Uh, it was pretty cool. He actually got to uh, hand Melissa Benos the uh, the award for Supergirl. Mm-hmm. So he he sent out an awesome tweet where he's like, "Grandfather got to hand over the trophy to." <laughs> granddaughter you know <laughs> right right i did i i got very confused by by that tweet um but that's a that's a much longer story that i think graphics are going to be needed so we're just gonna skip over that part but yeah. so other things that were in the news is and and this caught me off guard really caught me off guard and i have no idea how much validity is in this statement but apparently some of the news outlets are reporting that Denzel Washington is being eyed to play Magneto in the MCU. That yeah, would be really I, cool casting. That, that that, that's fine. Um, Dark Phoenix literally just got released earlier this year. I don't know if I'm like, like this feels too soon. And we haven't got an announcement of her film or anything with the mutants. So I just, I feel like why all of a sudden are we getting these reports about all of these casting rumors for the mutants? When I was like, I thought that Feige made it pretty clear that we're not going to see them for a few years. So, so why does it, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it was a slow news week or something, but no, this no, just it's just weird. I mean, I, I don't like you know, throwing other outlets under the bus or or saying I don't trust sources or whatever. But this was the uh, this was from the We Got It Covered folks, and they are notorious for just throwing spitballing stuff out there, and people just just run with it. I mean, I see it in a lot of Facebook groups and on Twitter where you know, We Got It Covered it, it reports some some outlandish rumor i mean especially you know we, prior to the show you know we were talking about the arrowverse uh, crossover crisis this year and they were like throwing everybody out there mm-hmm. from you know tom willing's coming back and this that and the other and i mean their their success rate compared to some of other uh, non-traditional media outlets is 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 pretty spotty to be to be quite blunt so take it for Take it for what it's worth. I mean, they, they love the spitball. Uh, personally, I mean, yeah, it would be awesome to see Denzel, but like you said, I mean, really, honestly, they just, the X Men just need to just go sit in a corner for a little while. And just, well, just, and just, 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 just stay away, you know, let the MCU just, just do its thing. I think there's a lot of bad taste in people's mouths on that franchise right now. I think the best thing for it is just to take a break and come back, you know, maybe in a few years when, when dark Phoenix and some of these other uh, movie failures have, can have, have been washed from people's palate. Right. And also I don't, we have to remember, okay. When, whenever they do decide to introduce the mutants, Feige is smart enough to to bring them into the fold through a whole new story of story, right? Because let's not forget he, they did this with Spider-Man. Okay? Yep. For two franchises, we got Spider-Man and it was all about the Osborns. It was retelling mm-hmm. that story every single time or both yep. times. Mm-hmm. And then, and then in this system, it wasn't about that. We didn't get yep. Uncle Ben dying. We didn't get. We we pushed 
we went fast forward, skipped over all that BS, and just focused on him and some other villains. So I think they're going to do this with mutants as well. I don't think that Magneto is going to be introduced right away. Or even not until, like, towards the end. Maybe when he ha- would have a bigger storyline to play with everybody else. I think it's just going to be about really taking what most of us fell in love with, which was that 90s TV show, and bringing, mm-hmm. bringing that team to life. If they can yes. do that, then you can bring in Magneto, no problem. But, but what has never felt right is that central core team. And I still believe... Because you have Captain Marvel. You now are going to get Miss Marvel. Rogue has to be the linchpin. I yeah. still believe that. You're right. <laughs> and I have some other um, prophecies about the whole MCU. Because also this week we got um, a tidbit about how Robert Downing Jr. will appear in Black Widow. Well, duh, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we talked about this when during Comic Con about how as soon as they confirmed this would be the bridge between where she is at the end of Civil War and where she is at the beginning of Infinity War, well we have to see that 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 passage of time and we were talking about how well will Steve Rogers appear or or even Anthony Mackie you know right one of those characters because she really does go from that scene in the airport and then in an infinity war she just is one of part of the crew um with with Captain Rogers so i just i feel like you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this week somebody announces that Chris Evans is going to be in Black Widow, too, for a small cameo. I'm like, well, yeah. duh. Well, duh, yeah. <laughs> Make, let me ask you this, then. Do you think having, given Iron Man's passage in Endgame, do you think this diminishes or takes away that uh, the emotional effect of the death? Or no, it, it's because it's a, it's a prequel. True, it, true. It is a prequel. It is a prequel, but... Um, it, you know, I guess even though we know story wise it's a prequel timeline, etc. Given the the, hero, the heroic ending for Tony Stark, I just wonder if for for some fans if that diminishes the that that moment in 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 Endgame. Well, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna throw that out there, what about Black Widow? Black Widow's That's, getting a yeah. whole movie right yeah. after she yeah. made a pretty big sacrifice in Endgame too that people exactly. often forget because they're so focused on Tony. There, that that is a very fair point, and honestly, I, they really should have had this film prior to Endgame, but you know, anyway, we didn't. So, well, I, I, again, I just put that I just put that out there. This is a, as a thought. I mean, I I agree with you. I, I I'm okay with it, honestly. With Tony being in there, and and I don't feel like it uh, diminishes it, but I can see how some people may feel that way. We have yet to see the movie because then, as soon as I saw that tidbit, I also saw some disclaimers that no, it's just going to be pretty much the same final scene in Civil War where he tells her to run. So. Mm-hmm. And, and really, something that I keep thinking about, especially as we get more excited for Black Widow, is that there is a reason why Spain dropped now. And so I think if this movie plays out correctly in the way it should, Taskmaster and whatever she does end up getting, having to do um, as Black Widow in this weird story... It's going to play into what what Phase 4 is going to be all about. So yeah, I think there's yeah. going to be a lot more Easter eggs. This is going to be like a prologue for f- Phase 4. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, yeah, it I'll will be. I'll when I'm right. Except huh? for when I'm wrong and it falls flat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, but I, I do think you're right that this, this film is going to be, uh, even though, Homecoming, oh, excuse me, Far From Home was was going to play kind of, you know, it basically ended the Infinity Saga. 
Uh, I think this this is going to be one of those things that, yes, even though it happens in the Infinity Saga, I, I think you're right on point in that uh, they're going to use this as an opportunity to spring off things for Phase 4, and uh, and, and it will be that bridge film to, you know, to to tie the next phase back to, back to the Infinity Saga. And hopefully people watch it and go back and watch Endgame, and then her sacrifice stands out as being more heroic in the end. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. a lot of people complained about that moment yeah. in the that film. Was... Even though yeah. I loved it, however, I still I still stand by my original statement. If they, sh- if they had, like, they didn't have to go back and forth with her and ha- Hawkeye, like, a yeah. dozen times. Like, yeah. Th- if yeah. they could have done it quicker, and it would have had such a bigger, more emotional impact. But whatever. I'm not the producer. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about producing mistakes. Yeah. Let's talk yes. about Titans. <laughs> yes, let's talk about, about Titans, because I, I think I know where you're going to go with this. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a really obvious one. Yeah, I, it is. I, I do not believe any of the statements that they released when they decided to cut off three episodes from season one that were already shot and they already had planned out. And and they were just they just said, well, we figured that this would be a better tie in for season two and make more sense to kick off season two than actually wrap up season one. BS. They did not yes. finish the effects of Trigon. That was the whole issue. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I think. <laughs> and they probably could not find the, 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 the jewel, like the, like, that, that little sticky thing that they put on Raven, and now it's yeah. very distracting when she's on screen. <laughs> just flick it away every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. just, it kills me, Will. I'm watching it, and I'm watching episode one, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this literally is part two of the season one finale. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I, I was like, really? Really? Y'all... Oh, like did this, but yeah, it 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 really was like you're right. It was they had to finish the special effects. They, that has to be it. Or they were like, I don't know. We're just let's just we're tired. Let's just let's just stop here and we'll just put it in season two and no one will care. But <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> it was. It was. And then and then they when you. You have, you know, I felt like in my notes, I was like, okay, you have part two, and then you have like the last, you know, 15 minutes or so where Dick and Bruce have their heart to heart and, and Deathstroke as, you know, season 1.5. Because, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. because it's so clear that, that, okay, we have to, we filmed all this stuff for season two, but we're going to just lop it on with, uh, you know, with whatever part of season one that didn't work as far as the season finale they just cut all that ended up on a cutting room floor with the exception of superboy emerging out of the out of the vault but everything else yeah i mean it's it it it, it was it felt like i was watching uh two different episodes in in, in one in one hour yeah yeah two different shows yeah. almost i mean yeah. I, this it it's it was interesting. I obviously have not gone watch and rewatched season one. I knew exactly where they had ended things. I understood what was going on. And did you did you th- have you considered this? Because this is what confused me. So in the part one of the season finale, um, yeah. the actual last episode of season one, not to be confused, <laughs> <laughs> most of it is Dick in a dream sequence having already put in... Okay, so here's what confused me, because it seemed as if Dick was living out this perfect life in his dream se- sequence. Mm-hmm. He, he was in love with Dawn, and they yep. had a baby on the way and all of that. So right. why is it 
that in this episode, when everybody else is getting put under Trigon's spell, God, that's a weird sentence to say. They, it's, it's twisted. It's almost like we really get like um, Corey, for example. Corey reunites with Rachel, and then, um, then it twists itself, and she suddenly has to do what she came here to do, which was to kill her. And so she right. does, and then she's under Trigon's spell. So I just, I, I don't. At, at any point in the part one, did Dick ever kill somebody to suddenly, like, I don't understand why, because it feels like two different sets of dr- dream sequences. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I think, I think it goes to Dick's core being the, I guess, lack of a bet. He's not. He is the least broken of the members of the Titans, because Corey clearly Corey has some, as we see it in episode two, the true season premiere. Uh, Corey is definitely has some things going back on her home world that causes a conflict, and even in, in, in the first part of season one, when she was not clear as far as her memories and stuff, as far as only thing she knew she her mission was was to kill Rachel you know she was she she was a, a conflicted individual uh, I mean Bruce and Dick had their falling out but it seemed that even even with with that Dick was still trying to uh, keep Batman from murdering everyone and murdering a joker mm-hmm. so even though he even though he was conflicted with his feelings about Bruce he still did not allow you know he, he went to great lengths to keep Bruce from killing the Joker and you know and, and the other characters as well all of them have their their faults I mean, obviously Hank was uh, you know, he was abused and he was you know, you know became Hulk for and and dealt with his trauma I mean, Dawn had her trauma, so yeah. So in his his idyllic world, he he's you know he's he's perfect, and and so maybe that's why. Whereas everybody else just failed, Dick was still had that core, and that's why Rachel was able to 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 bring that out of him and, and break the spell of Trigon because she knew at at, at the end of the day, Dick was the was the most stable of every everyone in the group. I don't buy it, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I mean, yeah, it's he's stable, but he also, I mean, he's. I feel like with season one, they were trying to get across all of the darkness that's in him and how yeah. he is broken because of his childhood. Uh, there's a loss of in- innocence there. And yeah. really what he was trying, what I did appreciate was I feel like at the end of it, he decided, you know, I can harbor this grudge against Bruce all I want, but he can't go back in time and change it. Like it's yeah. done. I am yeah. who I am today. And, yeah. and, and there's nothing. And, yeah. <laughs> and I think that makes, the, I mean, I think that's why he, you know, whenever he had these dream sequences, that's why he was able to, to break that. And that's, mm-hmm. and that connection between Rachel and Dick with the very uh, the initial dream when she saw him, uh, he, you know, she was able to, she knew that he, he would come through and save her whenever she was falling off of the trapeze because he was oh broken. Oh God, I hated that part. I yeah. hated that part. I skipped through it because it was so weird. I mean, I just, there was something so like, I'm like, really? This, they they choose to do this? That is so sappy. It's just sappy. And I really don't, I don't, (laughs) this is mean to say, I don't buy anything Rachel does because I I don't think that she's a good actress. So I just, There's something about that storyline where I'm never going to f- be fully invested in it. That being said, some of the bits I did like about this first episode was them um, teasing Jason relentlessly uh, for being the new Robin. I love that. I love him and Donna. I hope we see more of that this season. 
you know, Hawk and Dove, they're, they're always kind of a hit and miss. And I think for these first two episodes, they were pretty on point. Mm-hmm. So so I really like their dynamic. Um, we got to move Dawn away from this whole I'm hung up on Dick Grayson kind of thing. Because that that kind of, I feel like, got in the way of us really understanding her and Hank. Which I mm-hmm. think is important because they are a duo. Right. Uh, th- and, and you know, towards the end, I mean, as the episode progressed, it got better and better. And and then we got the real episode, the first episode of season two. Yeah, right, right. Well, before, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got the real one. But, yeah, which was set up very well with uh, with 1.5 of the first episode with, with Deathstroke returning. Mm-hmm. It's not Manny Brennan, though. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not. But this version, but Isai Morales did a really with little dialogue. He was able to like convey that when he saw Jason like jump on the screen, Titans are back, bitches. He uh-huh. was uh, he that that look of like I'm gonna get that little prick. Like this was just conveyed so well and really did a good job of setting up what we saw in the true season premiere in episode two yeah episode two we we meet rose wilson who turns out to be um deathstroke's daughter and Mm -hmm. also which which is interesting because obviously there's history between at least jason and deathstroke i'm assuming dick and deathstroke but neither one of them knew that he had a daughter right Right. He's also missing an eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't help themselves, could they? They they like really they really had to go there. Well, and well, that is that is that is actually accurate. Rose, oh, in the comics, okay. yeah, she she is she does have one, only one eye, and and uh, the the story behind that is she um, she actually gouged her eye out to 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 prove her loyalty and and to just to slade. Uh, there's a whole dynamic in the Titans comic about uh, Rose and, and Nightwing and and training and 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 and, every, and whatnot. So uh, definitely go check it out if you if you now you have the DC app. You may be able to you can you can look it up. That's the great thing about having a show. You can have the show and you have a library of comics right there at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, but who needs those when you have the CW universe, which was um, allowed me to understand pretty much all of the Easter eggs in this episode. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Roy sure. Hopper, I know who that is. Dr. Yeah. Light, yep, I've seen that oh, one. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, but the CW version of Dr. Light on The Flash is not the right... Is, uh, is, I know. That's just, yeah. I know. I know. And, and said, don't let the fly, don't let the CW throw you too far astray. Yeah. Remember when you were the defender of the Flash? I miss I'm these still... days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a defender. I'm still a defender, but at the same time, I, I have to I have to be honest. I, I have to be intellectually honest when we when we do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of being honest, so this episode it's it's really just putting putting the pieces um, on the game board as we we fast forward three months dick is fully embracing his new role as trainer of the new titans whatever that means um and jason points out to him very quickly if he's robin then who is dick um well that's foreshadowing for nightwing I don't know why we haven't already gone in Nightwing. I thought there were yeah. plenty of hints last season about it, but whatever. They yeah, they're dragging that one a little bit too long for my taste, but yeah. Meanwhile, Hawk and Dove are settled on a farm in Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> talk okay, about nowhere. <laughs> yeah, if you talk about really getting away from heroing, then that's one way of doing it. Going in the middle of nowhere, but it, even but of course. That was quickly undermined. Oh yeah, by Doctor Light. I, you know, and this this just reinforces my point about them. 
I think it's it's kind of refreshing to see that it's Dawn who's still attracted to the vigilanteism and mm-hmm. wanting to be the hero and wanting to um, beat people up and get revenge and set set things right the only way she knows how because in in pre other shows you would often see that from the male character and it's the female yeah. character who's always trying to no we want to have a life we want to we want to do that so i like that twist on it i yeah, also I, I also hope that they explore the parallel between these two where hank is got addicted to pain pills and um other n- narcotics and part of the reason why he left vigilanteism behind is he felt like that was that was um, what kept him returning to popping those. And then she is clearly addicted not to <sighs> Dick Grayson, but but to but to the fight, to the adrenaline yeah. of being powerful and being able to hurt other people. So I do hope that we continue to see that fleshed out. Yeah, I really, I felt, you know how you were saying that Hawk and Dove are hit and miss? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you that these two episodes really were hits for both these characters. And it, and really, it it really explored the whole idea of vigilanteism through, through Dawn and her, her, as you, as you very well put it, put it, the, the rush and it, being a vigilante and, and beating these guys up and and trying to exact justice where there there is none. Uh, I mean, whenever she was going through that meth lab, it just just kick just I mean, just the sheer energy and everything that she was going through and taking them out. And then I loved how she had the one meth operator yeah. like call the cops and like turn himself in and you know fed him what to say. I mean, it was it was. It really, like, really, like you said, got to. Um, I'm glad, like you said, that they had her be the one doing that instead of Hank and Hank sort of stepping back and be like, no, this is just not the way to go, and 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 sort of be put in that role of, of, I guess, being more submissive to. To, to to her than her mm-hmm. being submissive to him as far as you know this is the way we're going to go right um and, and also this it was very real too as far as like how how addiction can interfere with relationships and mm-hmm. and and how you know she was really addicted to this vigilanteism and he was to the point where no i can't do this anymore and and, and until dr light of course kind of forced the issue but yeah, I mean, it was just really, I really liked that. It really humanized these characters in this in this world. Yeah, I I think hopefully it stays on track. That's my only fear is that it's going to turn into what last season occurred, where they they would be on point in one episode, and then it would be like you're watching a different couple play out. And and I mean, really, what I think happened again is that they had to include this whole previous relationship between Don and Dick, and how there was a love triangle. Okay, this show does not need any more freaking love triangles because now we're going to get introduced, and I swear I'm predicting this: we're going to get introduced to the Dick Donna Corey love triangle, mm. which. Okay, let's let's just call a titan a titan here. The previous titans, is it really just a group of people who have all slept with Dick Grayson? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Well, we don't know for sure if Donna and him ever got it on, but I I just I'm very suspicious of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know because I know in the first season they 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 play they touched on that their relationships um, and it to me it was always very clear that that at least in this universe of the show uh, Dick and Donna were just friends. I mean, it was more a a sibling relationship, and we won't go to Iris and Barry on the Flash, but but <laughs> well, I didn't but that, even think about that, but yeah. 
but that's that's the vibe I got from them. I don't I don't think I ever got the hookup kind of vibe. So I got but. the same vibe last season, but in this episode, when Corey and Donna were talking, have you heard from Dick yet? No. Have you? No. And um, it feels like he just wants to take care of the kids all by himself. And and Donna seemed really, like, piffed by that. Mm. And, like, she wanted to play the mother role to his father role. I don't, I don't know. I guess what I'm really trying to articulate is I, I wouldn't put, the, put it past these writers. I would not put it past these writers to, to come out of left field and introduce this whole love triangle. Because... Because I don't think they can do it again with Dawn, considering every they already explored that and it was weak. Mm-hmm. But so I just, and especially because we we know it's going to be Corey and Dick at the end of this, right? Right, like right. That's right. that's spot on. So, right, exactly. I don't know. So, I mean, yeah. to to kind of get us off at this point, Corey and Donna. This episode highlight. Highlight, highlight, highlight. These yeah. two, such a good match. This is what I hope when we see Super Supergirl and Batwoman on screen together. This, this is what I want. <laughs> this is, mm-hmm. yeah. This is, this is great. I love their banter. I love the whole. Oh, so now you're a human, <laughs> even though Donna's <laughs> only half human. <laughs> yeah. She's like, this is what this is what they do. I I like how they're sisterly. I also appreciate how they, they kind of still they didn't tag along with Hawk and Dove or go back to the tower. They went on their own adventure. So I really appreciate that. I I hope. Um, we see more of it in the future, yeah. but I don't know. It's because Corey ends up getting kidnapped. Right, right. Kidnapped, and you know, it was a very mysterious character who called her your highness. And so uh, clearly it's uh, someone from her home world, and, and we'll see how that all unfolds this season. And then, and then of course, we can't uh, let Donna's uh, phone call to, a, to Roy Harper go unnoticed as well so will we see a colton pop up i I don't know but maybe it's hinting at a future of um arsenal being on the show being a titan or a former titan i thought he's definitely for yeah yeah he's a former he's definitely a former titan so i think roy was i mean i don't clearly are they are expanding this universe this season i mean we we know for exact that uh, Jericho is going to show up. We we know that Superboy at some point was you know was teased at the end of season one, so you know, so the, the, this new version of Titans are are, are going to, to form. And of course, um, obviously with Dick you know, getting access to the tower again to train this new team up, and and he's going to probably have to call on his old teammates to deal with the threats from from Deathstroke. Who is uh, who is a well known, uh, who's the, one of the primary enemies of the Titans. So, uh, and then of course Doctor Light as well. So, yeah, they're going to bring the band back together, and all these little nuggets are, are not being dropped in the season premiere for for no reason. My one or the one thing that bothered me in this season premiere. And yes, episode two is the season premiere of season two. Is is there was no crypto, or or there was no Superboy, Superboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. we were teased. It. Yeah, we were teased that in the legitimate season one finale, and that's what I was expecting for the season two premiere. Granted, we just got part two of the season one finale. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm beating yeah. a dead ho- horse at this point, but still <laughs> irritating. And it and I just I expected us to go back there at least for a little bit tease, but um, maybe it's because what they really needed to do was set up the Wilsons and Rose being a part of Titans and how her and her father are going to um, bring about some turmoil, maybe. Um, yeah. Maybe some 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 backstabbing. I don't know. 
it could def that would that will definitely be the case. She's definitely going to be a Titan, and it, that definitely plays into some of the stories in the comics where uh, Rose was uh, a member of the team, but also uh, had some uh, interactions with their father, father as as Deathstroke. So, yeah, I mean, it, this I will say it was a good season to kick off, set up a lot of good story points for us to, to jump off with with both Deathstroke, obviously Dr. Light, uh, you know, the questions we have about, you know, what's the significance of Roy Harper and and so many other uh, you know, the continuing evolution of, of Dick and and Bruce's relationship, I mean uh, granted Bruce sounds Scottish, but, you know, hopefully you know, by the end of the, the season he will, you know be a little bit more gruff but um yeah i i i was i you know given this how we've had the three other two three shows on the dc universe happen obviously doom patrol was the best and swamp thing had a strong run until the end uh i feel that titans came back very strong and it's going to uh, i think we'll have a good second second season and I think it's also this was a good reset um, in, in this in this uh, premiere this, for season two. Yeah, I'm I'm excited, and maybe it's because for the last few weeks we've we've come to a drought in genre TV. Pennyworth didn't work out. Carnival Row yeah. didn't work out, and so now I'm presented with Titan season two, and. As much as I like giving them a hard time, it's still entertaining. It still gives you and I something to talk about. The, yep. It's still building a world that I understand that I've come to love through other shows as well. And it has some growing pains. And I do, I do get the impression season two will be substantially better than season one. I just also, you know me, I need to always keep my expectations low because when yep. I raise them, people disappoint <laughs> me. And when I say people, I mean showrunners all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> you break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's it for us tonight. Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk. That's W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. You can find me at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, but most importantly, rate, subscribe, and comment on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify. Good night. Geek out. You're welcome.